Welcome back, and thanks for tuning in to another episode of Lab Padres Starbase Weekly Updates. Now let's dig in. Kicking things off late on the 21st, Starship 24 continued to come together as its aft flaps were installed in the mid-bay. Back at the shipyard, construction of the new Star Factory, Boca Chica's permanent factory facilities, continues to show progress one column and beam at a time. The Super Heavy Booster Assembly likewise shows no signs of slowing down as the next vehicle's thrust section was flipped outside the tents. Over at the launch site, test prep work continued at Test Stand A, where a new quick disconnect frame was lifted into place. Later in the day, the quick disconnect arm was swung away from the launch tower. A little bit of movement was later seen in the chopstick arms ahead of further testing. Later that night, workers raised the chopstick assembly, lifting them up before lifting them back down. Returning from its latest mission at the Cape, Finn Fogout arrived back in the port with just read the instructions and Falcon 9 Booster 1060 after successfully launching Starlink Group 4-14 into orbit. Once the landing barge reached the docks, the Falcon 9 booster was lifted and placed on solid ground. Returning to Starbase on the morning of the 25th, Super Heavy Booster 7 was relocated inside the high bay. It's presumed Booster 7 returned to the build site because the downcomber failed during cryo testing a couple of weeks ago. Audio recording during that test was able to pick up a loud bang shortly after ice was seen falling off the booster. The new Star Factory building continues to grow, with more outer walls, inner columns, and roof beams being installed. Meanwhile, at the launch site, crews performed some work on one of the chopsticks' lower stabilizer arms and removed the diagonal sections overnight. The orbital launch mount's inner ring was observed venting in the afternoon. These vents provide spin-start gas for Super Heavy's outer ring of Raptors. On the morning of the 26th, crews got to work installing three stair sections into Mega Bay. Returning to the Cape, Falcon 9's Booster B-1060 was lifted onto the booster transporter for its upcoming refurbishment. Joining 1060 in port, Megan returned with Axiom-1 Crew Dragon Capsule Endeavor. Starship 24's forward dome was seen being relocated. The needs of production keep a lot of hardware in motion. Eventually, Starship 24's forward dome was moved into the high bay for future ship assembly. As Starship continues to evolve, the supporting hardware likewise has to change. The quick disconnect arm has been undergoing modification to support the new vehicles. On the 27th, SpaceX and Crew-4 lit up the night sky as they lifted off to the International Space Station. The construction of Boca Chica Star Factory's new walls continues at its characteristic rapid pace. The cancelled Starship 21, after being cut into section, has finally met its fate and sent to the scrapyard. Ship 21, designed for Raptor 1, was made obsolete by the development shift towards Raptor 2. At the launch site, new parts of the orbital launch tower's quick disconnect arm were lifted and installed. The new platforms and ladders will assist with workers with maintaining Starship's umbilicals. After these lifts, the QD arm is now ready for the installation of the ship quick disconnect. The launch site infrastructure development continues with the addition of a new methane pump installed at the orbital tank farm. Later on that same night, the new Mega Bay's first two bridge cranes began testing, moving left and right several times. The newest version of the Starship Quick Disconnect was moved to the launch site. This collection of pipes and hoses supplies Starship with tank pressure, propellants, and power. A number of liquid nitrogen tankers began to arrive at the launch site, offloading at the methane ports. Liquid nitrogen, being chemically inert, is used for cryoproof testing. Testing a large rocket requires a large volume of cryogenic fluids. With the new platforms and other modifications completed, 
The new Starship Quick Disconnect assembly consisting of the interface plate, propellant feed lines, and other cables and hoses was lifted and installed on the launch tower. Installation work on the new Quick Disconnect continued well into the night as workers cut and ground things into shape. The following morning, with the Quick Disconnect assembly installation complete, the crane was unhooked and swung away. And there you have it, another Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the alert bell for new video notifications. We'll see you next week, and thanks for tuning in. Lab Padre, out.